Hello and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. We are going to be talking with Adelaide in just one moment, but first there's things in here. I guess I could steal them, but I don't really want to get on their bad side just yet. I guess I'll leave it alone for now. I don't want to be a bad guy. I want to do good things. I'm a good person. At least right now, I'm killing marauders. Adelaide, wow, what is this cool thing that you got here? Some kind of hydro system, hydro pump system. It's so pretty. That's what I'm saying. Look at this place. Hey, Adelaide, what's up? If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're barren illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? Well, you're much more personable than Grace outside. She was giving me a little bit of trouble on the way in. And I also heard that you're missing somebody named Zoe. I guess we'll get to all that in just a moment. Look, you must be Adelaide. I'm Carrot. It's very nice to meet you. I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobaccorn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Uh, I would try some of your tobacco and tea. It's not like I'm on a major time commitment here. I just have to get the part for my ship that I need. So how long does it take, I guess? Well, let's get back to that in just a second. Look, this is your greenhouse, right? You run this place? No, dear. The garden belongs to us all. Life is the gift of the universe, and the universe yields its bounty equally, absent of prejudice. Well, it's kind of far away from town, and... Sort of out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there's a lot of greenery around, but I'm really surprised you managed to grow anything here. The soil around the Vale went sour years ago, but I found a way to sweeten it back up. The secret recipe is a little bit of elbow grease, a dash of love, and a heaping pile of special fertilizer. Interesting. I don't really want to know what's in that special fertilizer. It sounds like it could be a little bit disgusting, but... This place isn't too bad. It looks like you've made a... Nice little home for yourself out here. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball, cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. I wonder why you ventured beyond the walls of your safe home and decided to make a new home here, so close to your old home. It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. I kind of know the reason you left, and I get it. After reading through things, it makes sense. And I know that you probably don't want to talk about him and you don't wish to make any deals with him. But I've been speaking to Reed, and he wanted me to come talk to you. You see, he said that he was willing to change. He said that he was willing to not work you guys so hard if you were to come back under his protection. He sent me to make peace with you. Reed Thompson, you here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace then? You know, like I was saying before, he wants to change his ways. He wants to treat you better. He just wants you to consider it. Make amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. Now, it sounds like you're having a little bit of trouble with Marauders taking people away. I don't know how fine it is, but I gotta be honest with you. He asked me to take the power away from you. It, it belongs to town rightfully. To Edgewater. 
and you're siphoning it and using it as a crutch to have your own home. And I understand your desire to do so, but you can't do it with Edgewater's resources. He told me about a geothermal plant to go divert the power. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? I wasn't going to bring it up, but I do have a ship that I happen to need a power regulator for. See, mine's not working. And, and if you had one spare to use, I, I would gladly take it and, and let you guys siphon the power. It's no business of mine. But my ship can't take off without a working power regulator. Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. A hero to your town, certainly. But I'm not here to get in your politics. I don't know who's right and who's wrong. I've only just got here. I don't know what your intentions are. I don't know what Reed's intentions are. All I know is that Edgewater is providing you power currently, and I need a power regulator. So if we can come to some sort of deal, I would be willing to listen to that. Well, if it's all the same to you, then you ought to divert power over to us, shut down Reed's cannery, and scrap it for parts. But you realize what you're saying, though, right? What you're trying to ask me to do is essentially wage war on Edgewater. You want me to divert power away from the cannery, he has his own loyal people, and Reed sounds like a fairly powerful guy. He would fight me. It would be much easier for me to take on your little town full of non-fighters with only one person that can manage a gun. By the way, you shouldn't let Grace say that kind of thing because it lets me know what you're capable of. Or fight an army of potentially very well-armed people armed by spacers to divert power for what you say is the right cause. Why don't you tell me what you have against the town so maybe it can make this moral choice a little easier for me? You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. You're very charismatic. You obviously have a way with words and have gotten all these people on your side, but that doesn't mean that what you're doing is correct. And I don't know if it is. I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong. I was just saying that I don't know. I am not part of these politics. And I don't like you bringing her in just to get me to side with you. That seems a little bit underhanded, don't you think? I'm all right. I ain't so fragile. That was unkind of me. I'm sorry, dear. Let's say that I listened to your plan, and I decide to divert power away from Edgewater and over to you. And then the town is left somewhat defenseless as their doors will no longer function properly. And suddenly, having sent me on this mission, they're going to know exactly who did this. How am I supposed to set foot back in Edgewater? And how am I supposed to take off and get out of here? Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down. Workers desert in droves. And our own little camp grows and thrives. If they're grinding Edgewater to a halt, you're essentially regressing. You're going backwards in time. And if your town grows, who's to say the same thing isn't going to happen, but with Adelaide instead of Reed? We don't know the answer to that yet. I don't know you, so I can't make that judgment. But what you're saying is you think Reed wants to divert power away from you just to spite you. You bring power to Reed's town and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it. He's counting on it. He didn't say he wanted you to die. He said he wanted you to come back. 
But look, I can see that you're steadfast and you're holding your ground here. So I'll think about it before I make any rash decisions. I trust you will listen to your conscience. I suppose I will, and I've got some very tough choices to make before I get to the geothermal master control system. And I don't know what I'm going to do when I get there, but we're going to leave that for another time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please join me in the next episode when maybe I look through Zoe's home for some answers there. You guys have a good one.